नाम दी चढ़ दी कला तेरे भाने सरबत का भला वाहेगुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह बोले सोनिया श्री अकाल दिस इवेंट द पर्पज ऑफ दिस इवेंट इज टू कैरी ऑन समथिंग दैट The tenth Guru started in March every year. Anandpur Sahib, Anandpur Sahib, Holla Mahalla is celebrated by all the Sikhs. Okay. Now I'm going to ask the children, especially those from Warsaw and Willenhall, should be able to tell me what is Holla Mahalla. Um, it's when you ride on horses um, and you fight with swords. Spar with swords. Well done, good answer. Okay, now the reason why we celebrate this event because there's an event in India called Holi. Okay, now Holi was when the people in India used to throw colours at each other to to celebrate love. Now Guru Gobind Singh said to the Sikhs, "Why do we do this? Why are we throwing colours at each other? Because this is a something that Sikhs should do." and some of the sikhs said that we're celebrating because we're throwing colors at each other and we're celebrating love guru gobind singh said this isn't how i want my sikhs to celebrate love i want my sikhs to come together and show me how strong they are show me their warrior spirit and how tough they are so what guru gobind singh organized was something which some people call the Sikh Olympics so all the Sikhs would come together and they would show off their horse riding skills their sword fighting skills their wrestling skills and other other sports so this is why we're doing this because all you guys here you're all learning martial arts so we want you to show off your skills with each other and show everybody else okay now Another reason this year we've not only called children from Lions MMA but there's children from Sheri Punjab that train at this Gurdwara we gave offers to children from Lions Rain in London and other clubs to come down so we could all come together and celebrate this event so for us it's a chance to bring some unity with our kids and it also gives them the experience of competing in the ring now just a quick thing that we want to touch on today even though you're fighting it all has to be done in a friendly way we're looking at creating one family so even though you might be from different clubs some of you are from Warsaw Wolverhampton Willenhall Cape Hill Huddersfield and Leeds will be here soon there's the guys that spar here and train here from Albury we don't want you to compete like you want to beat each other up we want you to compete like your one family and show us how good you are at training how good you are you are, uh, how good you are with your punches and your kicks this is also for the parents as well so a big request we don't want to turn this into a sunday morning football park where the parents are shouting at the kids do this do this it has to be friendly okay and we want the children to get on and like each other and treat each other like brothers and sisters and we're going to kind of push that throughout the day because last year and we realized a lot of parents were coming to the sh uh, sides shouting instructions do this and do this and we want and we don't want that kind of environment he's born in amritsar facts about this person He fought and killed a lion with his bare hands. He served with Maharaja Ranjit Singh. He was the first person in history to take over Afghanistan. Who is this superhero? You've got one, two, two hands. Who is this superhero? You all knew who Batman was. You all knew who Spider-Man was. You all knew who 
The other superhero was, who is he? It's not Baba Deep Singh. Hari Singh Nalua, well done. Excellent. And where are you from? Which club? Warsaw. Well done. Excellent. What can you tell me about Hari Singh Nalua? He took over Afghanistan. How many of you have heard of Afghanistan? A lot of you. How many of you can tell me how many years it took America and all the West to take over Afghanistan? How many years? This is a real superhero and I'll tell you why. Okay? Because when you go away from here, this tournament is to tell you about real superheroes. Okay? This is what you can become. Not superheroes that you see on TV, in comics, in videos, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, yeah, and all the rest. I'm going to give you information about three Sikh superheroes. Yeah? The first one, out of the 50 of you, or the, four, or the four, 45, 50 of you, only two people had their hands up for a real Sikh superhero. Put your hand up if you're a Sikh. We're all Sikhs. Put your hand up if you heard of the person, Hari Singh Nalua. Yeah? You all heard of him. But these are three small facts. How many of you have seen Batman or Spider-Man? or Superman fight with a lion with his bare hands when he was 15. How many of you can name a person who under Maharaja Ranjit Singh took over Afghanistan still to this day and I say this is a very important piece of information if you speak to people from Afghanistan they still put their children to sleep by saying to them if you don't go to sleep we're going to call Hadi Singh Nalua. This is how much fear they had for Hari Singh Nalua. Hari Singh Nalua was an Ammatari Gursik who under the guidance of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, he met Maharaja Ranjit Singh when he was 14. Okay? Now when he was there, he told Maharaja Ranjit Singh that his forefathers, his dad, his granddad, they fought and they represented the Sikh army. So at that point, Hari Singh Nalua joined Maharaja Ranjit Singh's army. He went on to be one of the greatest Sikh generals ever. It's a very important general that we should know about. And he had faith in one thing. Do you know what his faith was in? That one thing. What was his faith in? God. His faith, his faith was always in his Ardas. We started the Ardas off at the start today. How many of us were listening? How many of us were concentrating? How many of us do a ardas? How many of us do a ardas when we're about to start any project? How many of you do a ardas when you're about to do anything small in life? Anything big? Hadi Singh Nalua, if one thing, if you look at his history, he will say, and history will say, when he did a ardas, he followed it through. Okay, there's a story about Hadi Singh Nalua that when he was going into battle, it came a point where a lot of the Sikh forces and the Sikh uh, regiments were left behind. He was there by himself with only a small amount of things. A lot of the Sikhs advised him not to go any further. Do not cross that bridge because when you do, there's no going back. Hari Singh Nalua said, Avdamayar Das. Avdamayar Das, once Avdamayar Das, I never go back. You need to have faith in your Das. Next superhero. Ten seconds to discuss it. Everybody in your group should know your answer. Go. Okay, guys. Who's this superhero? Who's the superhero? Banda Singh Bahadur. Why is Banda Singh Bahadur a superhero? Put your hands up if you hear the name Banda Singh Bahadur before. Very good. I'm very impressed. Okay. But what did Banda Singh Bahadur do? What's he done? What should give? Why should we give Banda Singh Bahadur superhero status? Who knows? He took revenge for the Sote Shabade, the Shote Shabade. He says there, Banda Singh Bahadur, he met Guru Gobind Singh in Hajur Sahib. And when he was at Hajur Sahib, he used to have a different name. His name wasn't Banda Singh Bahadur, his name was Madhav Das Bragi. That's who he was. And he had lots of spiritual powers. He had done lots of Simran, lots of part, 
But what he was doing with his spiritual powers, he was doing lots of bad things. Things that you shouldn't do when you have those powers. And when Guru Gobind Singh was out there, uh, at his um, say town area, Guru Gobind Singh said to the Sikhs, I want to sit down and rest, where shall we sit? And the Sikhs said, go anywhere, go here, go there, you can rest here, you can rest anywhere. And Guru Gobind Singh said, I want to go over there, what's over there? And that was his little place, it was his resting place, where he used to sit, where he used to do his simra and his bandagi. And what the Sikh said was, go anywhere, but don't go there. And the 10th Guru asked him, why shouldn't I go there? They go, over there, there's this saint. And whoever comes near him, whoever does things, he uses his powers to defeat them, to beat them. Guru Gobind Singh said, well, I'm going there. I'm going to go there and I'm going to see who this saint is. Who is this person that you're all scared of? And when Guru Gobind Singh went there, he tried with his powers to do many things to Guru Gobind Singh. He tried to get things to fall on top of him. He tried to, if you want to say, he tried to kill him. This is what he tried to do. But Guru Gobind Singh, he also had them powers. He had more powers. So after Maldas Bragi tried to do all this, he then came and fell at the feet of Guru Gobind Singh. He says, who are you? And what have you got? What's your power? And Guru Gobind Singh then told him who he was. At that point, he said to Guru Gobind Singh, take me under your wing. Make me with you. I want to join forces with you. Who are you? And after that, he then took Amrit. Okay? He took Amrit, and then about several years later, actually it wasn't years, it was months, months later, Guru Gobind, said to him, Guru Gobind Singh said to him, What are you? And he goes, Maharaj, I am a bandaya. And he goes, Jai tu bandaya, tu bandaya ande kam kar. And at that point, I put on there, Guru Gobind Singh Ji blessed him with five arrows and gave him the task of bringing down the Mughal Emperor. Guru Gobind Singh said to him, here's five teeth, five arrows. And you all know the story about the Sayyid how they were killed, the older ones and the younger ones. It was Banda Singh Bahadur that brought justice to those people. He brought, and like Paji said, he took revenge to a sense. He brought justice for the Sikhs. He destroyed the Mughal Emperor. And he established Khalsa Raj. That's what he brought to the Sikhs. Last one. Who is this person? You can all read it. It's just information. Who is this person? I'm going to give you a few minutes. Discuss this person. Who is he? What did he do? What's... Discuss it in your groups. Don't tell me. Tell your group. Who is this person? What do you know about this person? Okay, who is this person as we're running out of time? Who is this person, guys? Who is this person? Who is this person? Pindrawala? Sanjana Singh Khasa Pindrawala? He was going to say that. This person is Sant Janayat Singh Khalsa Pindravala. He is a Sikh superhero. Okay? He is somebody that you all should know about. Because we're talking about somebody who fought bravely 30 years ago. That is, if you speak to your parents, your grandparents, you speak to most people in the community, they will know who Sant Janayat Singh was. Okay? I'm going to put a picture of him on the board and I'm briefly going to tell you about why we're talking about him today. And the reason why we're talking about him today, this year for the Sikhs is a very important year. It's the 30th anniversary of the attack on Sidi Harmandar Sahib in 1984. Now, you guys weren't born then. So I wouldn't expect you guys to have a lot of information on this. But 30 years ago, put your hands up if you've heard of Sri Harmandar Sahib or the Golden Temple. Who here has heard of the Golden Temple? All of you. 30 years ago, the Golden Temple was attacked by the Indian government. It's come in the news again in the last few months, recently. 
that the British government gave them advice on how to attack it. But they killed thousands and thousands of innocent Sikhs. Now, we need to know who our superheroes were. We need to know what made them superheroes. What do you think made them superheroes? I'm going to give you 10, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to talk about and come up with something that you think what made these three superheroes? Just 20 seconds and we're finishing off. What made him or them superheroes? There are lots of talking going on, so there should be lots of answers. What made them superheroes? At the moment, I'm only seeing children from Warsaw and Wilno putting their hands up. Everybody's hand should be in there because you should know what made them superheroes. Honesty? Believing in God? Standing their ground? Standing up against injustice? Bart? God? Courage? Sacrifice? Blessings? Power? Perseverance? They never gave up? Dear Das. One of the best dances I've heard so far. Dear Das. Dear Das. And you said part. Somebody said part here. What gave them the strength? Was firstly their belief in God. And then it was an Ardas. And then it was their part. Their Seva and their Simran. They did all this. They had all the martial arts skills that you guys are learning now. But on top of this. They had the honesty, integrity, they had the courage to distinguish between right and wrong. That's what they had the power to do. They had the strength to say this is right and this is wrong. In your life, in the next few years, you guys will come against some many, many different challenges, many obstacles, and you guys have to decide what's right and what's wrong. And you have to make the right decisions in life and that will dictate and that will create your path for the rest of your lives. The choice of right and wrong. These guys made the right choices. They became superheroes. That's what they are. That's why these superheroes, we never forget. We talked about Hari Singh, Banda Singh Bahadur. That was two, three hundred years ago. But two, three hundred years later, we're still, we're still talking about them because they made the right choices. So this year, like I said, it's the 30th anniversary of 1984. Now you've all heard of, of Harmandar Sahib. You all know what happened. He got attacked. Thousands of Sikhs were killed. So if you can this year, you try and remember them. This June, there's going to be a rally in London. Try and attend it. Tell your friends. Tell your families. Tell who you can. Come and remember those that stood for us. Because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. Those people that have given their lives for us. So remember these superheroes and remember what's made them superheroes. Their belief in God, their ardas and their part. Now we have uh, some young girls doing some Muay Thai. Showing some uh, good spirit here. 
We seem to uh, find the girls are actually better fighters than the boys. In the far corner, we have two very youngsters. Uh, today, it's just an inter club. Uh, so it's very light sparring. Um, the Lions have made various clubs around the country. So we have more from five year olds to 15 year olds. The 15 year olds are a bit more aggressive. Uh, they have a bit more control and they should be able to take more of the punches and hits. Um, we're only doing body shots, so no head shots, no head kicks. The Sungut wise, we're having a very good turnout. This is very nice to see. So we've got uh, quite a few cities around the country represented. Right from Bradford, Leeds, Huddersfield, right down to London. Muta is the art of eight limbs, so you can strike with the elbows, knees, uh, you kick, you make contact with the shins, and you block kicks with the shins. So very two very good fighters here. So it's just been stopped there because of head contact. Yeah, this is like the eight-year-olds. Uh, showing good technique. So two very spirited fighters here. Here it's good to have uh, stamina, so we need to keep up for a good minute and a half. The adults uh, in future will fight for three minutes. So really, really good technique here. Very good blocking from both sides. So like I said before, the Sungut are from all over the country, uh, right from Bradford in the north to London. A very good turnout. It's good to see some supporting their kids. And we hope this continues and we're hoping to make it a bigger event in the future. I'm Mandeep Singh and it's great to see the Sikh channel um, do a great event here. The children are just getting ready for the next round. So they have the body pads on and the shin pads and obviously the gloves. In the real, real tournament, they would only have gloves. So as you can see, as the day goes on, uh, the tournament, the Sangat is getting bigger. So now we have the elders fighting here. Because the elders have more control, they can do a bit more harder. And by this age, 14, 15, you should be able to take a lot of the kicks and punches. So the kid with the 
orange top is showing good tips, good leg kicks. So what he's trying to do there is just wear down the other guy's leg, give him a dead leg. It's a good, good technique, good body punches. Great technique shown here by both sides. Good bit of kicking here. Good, good punch there. Great kicking there to the legs. The five, six year olds fighting. Again, showing great spirit. Great to see their mums supporting them and enjoying it more than they are. Good to see the other children all lined up, ready. At a younger age, such a young age, great to show a good technique. Good to watch out for these fighters because you know they're going to be winning some tournaments in the future. Good to see the parents taking active part and photographing or taking a movie of their children. Now he's grabbed in now, it's called clinching. So in Thai, Muay Thai you can clinch, then do knees to the body or in future face. So in Muay Thai it's okay to have mixed fights between men and women. There's like a bit of bullying going on here. Great uh, sh skill shown by the, the boy wearing the black t-shirt, very active, able to uh, block and kick back straight away. So it's coming in. Going for the shot, then going straight back out.
So it looks like here we've got the uh, young heavyweights. This is like the 14, 15 year olds. The kid with the shorts on showing great technique, good leg kicks. Good teeth on both sides. Good technique by the kid in the shorts. Looks like he's slightly injured the other guy's leg. It would be a limp. Good team. So the guy in the shorts knows he's uh, kind of injured the other guy's legs, so he's going to carry on hitting it. Great clinchy and knees there. That's a great catch of the leg and hit back. Nice bit of light fighting here, light sparring. So for the taller child, it's going to be a bit harder doing body shots. He's more used to doing the face shots. So what he could do is just do more kicks, round kicks, teep. Great technique shown by both fighters. Still on with the body, with the uh, leg kicks. So before the sparring, the ref just tells them. Uh, straightforward rules, body punches, body kicks, leg kicks only, no punches or kicks to the face. Some good uh, punching and good kicks here. Great kicking there. Good push. Great blocking using his uh, shins. Yeah. 
So one of the fighters with shorts on, black shorts on, he's from Huddersfield Lions MMA. Great fighter. Good sparring by both fighters. Great sparring here, great technique by both fighters. So good clinching. Great punching. I should have been blocked with uh, this kick should have been blocked. Always good to see the youngsters fight. Bit of a cheeky face shot there. Great fighting spirit shown by both fighters. Great teep and hold. Some uh, cheeky headshots there. Good takedown. Good leg kicks.
the technique shown by the girl with the uh, pink gloves. She's uh, combining kicks and punches. So now we have two of the senior girl fighters. Good bit of clinching knees. So the tall kid is from Huddersfield Lions MMA. We have uh, two of the youngsters fighters there. Clinching and knees. Bit of a vicious fighting between these two. Good technique, great uh, punches, great legs. <laughs> 